Hello friends, welcome to that Dan Driscoll talking about my morning routine, I guess. Uh, um, those of you that uh, follow me on Instagram, hello. Uh, actually, while we're here in the beginning and speaking of following, if you like the videos, um, give it a like, give it a follow, and uh, I'd appreciate it, um, and tell your friends. Anyway, I have drawn over a hundred cups. I, I just did a... Um, quick count the other day and that's a lot of cups it's a lot of little sketches and someone asked me why cups and it's it's a good question and it's it's a difficult question it started and it continues and at this point it would be weird not to draw a coffee cup as I had my first cup of the day. But what my routine has been since quarantine, since lockdown, uh, since at work they told us to pack up and we'd be out of, out of the office for two weeks and for me, it's been almost, it's been a year. I go in every once in a while, but for the most part, I I do try to avoid it. There are still plenty of people that aren't the best at following mask and distancing protocols. But anyway, I and I've been able to work from home quite successfully. Um, but I'm able to get the kids to work, get the, get the kids to school. It's like work, right? It's, it's work getting the kids to school. Anyways, I'll say that much. That gives me roughly half an hour um, to myself where I'm able to make uh, coffee, check out some news, do a drawing, before I'm at a computer planning my day, planning an animation schedule, doing animatics, boards, all that stuff that goes into making animated commercials. And somehow Drawing these coffee cups in the morning just gives me a chance to center myself, gives me a chance to try to just relax. The mornings can be hectic, I'm trying to get nine-year-old twins out the door. <laughs> with iPads and masks and books and jackets and all the things they need is can be can be an undertaking but this is a moment where i can sit down and uh just think about the day and get ready for it. I, I like to think it's one of those things where, you know, when you're when when you're trying to think of someone's name and you just it's on the tip of your tongue but you can't think of it, so you start doing another task, completely unrelated, and without any prompting or thought, the name comes to you. You just let your brain 
work on finding that name, finding the solution to the day, finding uh, the motivation to start the day while you focus on something else. And for me, that focusing on something else is, is drawing these pens. And it's a good practice. I find the, uh, the perspective is always um, different. Um, when you draw stereoscopically, you have two eyes. Um, so when you're looking at something, you, your, your brain is building it in a 3D space in, its brain, in your brain. And uh, so when it's at a certain distance, your, your, your eyes are kind of playing tricks on you with how it looks. So it's always kind of a challenge. That's why in all the cartoons and comics, when an artist is, is studying something, they'll close an eye and squint and you know try to get the reference. Um, which now that I say that out loud, I should probably do. So I don't uh, move around too much changing my own point of view. And I do try to, when I, when I do these cups, I do end up using some reference pencil work and then going in and inking um, with fountain pens, technical pens, brush pens, whatever, whatever I have handy. Uh, but I try not to go in with too much detail with, with the pencil. I, I do, I do want the ability to make mistakes and see where the drawing will take me when I'm drawing with ink. But with, with doing so many pens, so many, with doing so many drawings, it's, uh, you know, you have to try to keep it fresh. You can't draw the same mug with the same materials. Uh, with the same expected outcome. So I do try to change it up quite a bit. And that's helped keep me sane, and it's a nice challenge. And as you can see in this drawing, it's not always cups. Sometimes I draw the pens I have lying around too. <laughs> because sometimes it is really hard to like sit down and actually motivate yourself to draw a cup again but it's been a fun it's it's a fun exercise for the perspective i have been trying to sit in different places so the lighting changes i usually sit with the window at my back and so the lighting is often quite similar in the mornings so it's good to vary that too But this cup was, uh, the actual cup has text on it. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I added that or just drew the beard graphic. I feel like I've talked about this mug before somewhere. But this was a Christmas gift from my mother-in-law, so thank you for that if you're watching. She's not watching. But... It is a nice mug. But at this point, it's a routine that I really appreciate. When I did go into the office every day, I would have a cup of coffee with some coworkers and we would sit and we would chat about whatever was happening in the news or what exciting thing had happened over the weekend and we called it coffee and contemplation and that is something that I do miss quite a bit I do tend to contemplate on my own now as I draw that would be quite a yeah I don't know back in the office it'll be tough not drawing like this every day I'll have to figure out something but yeah here we have a nice simple 
black and white ink cup. It's a simple black and white ink drawing. That tends to be what most of them are. Which is, you know, it's just a nice simple way to start the day. I didn't start drinking coffee until I was in grad school. So I was actually, and I went to grad school late. I, I worked after college and then in my early 30s, I went back to grad school. And even being your, in your 30s at grad school, you're still the old man on campus. But I didn't drink coffee until grad school. I don't know how I managed that looking back now. Um, because I don't think I could go back to not drinking coffee. This pencil drawing started out, um, that is a pencil that my oldest daughter gave me um, on a trip she went on to England. And she was complaining that she hadn't seen the pencil around. And she went back to college before I could show her that I did still have it. But here it is. And the sketchbook I'm drawing in is a Muji sketchbook. And what I have found, what I really like about the sketchbook is you go, I go through it. it. The ink can bleed through the pages a little if it gets too heavy. But what I've enjoyed doing, um, when I got to the end of the first sketchbook is instead of starting a new sketchbook, I went back and I applied gesso to the opposite side of the page on the left here on the left page. It's, there is a drawing on the other side of that, but the gesso protects that drawing and it creates a really nice surface uh, for washes and ink washes, watercolor washes, some uh, charcoal and pencil work. Um, especially if you apply the gesso with a, a more uh, textured brush. So you, you end up building up a nice um, textured surface and it becomes very painterly. I do really enjoy that part of it. And I don't know what I'm... Is that my chair? Oh yeah, my chair is squeaking. I don't know. Hopefully you don't hear it. But yeah, where I'm at now, I've, I have, like I said, four sketchbooks, some of them double-sided pages, filled with these coffee cup sketches. Um, a friend of mine, she, uh, she actually asked, she, she sent a text on uh, Instagram and was like, how much for this one? And I told my wife, like, hey, our friend, she, uh, she wants to pay me for a, a drawing. And I, my wife's like, you cannot charge people for this. I'm like, oh, okay. So someone out there has a free drawing. <laughs> but maybe she means I can't, I don't know. So I, yeah, I try to think of what to do with this stuff. I like having it around. I like flipping through it. But I can't, I don't know if I can see myself hanging on to all these sketchbooks forever. Oh yeah, so here what I've done is I, I did the light drawing in the pencil and I've done some darker work with the uh, a charcoal pencil and then with a water brush. Just starting to push that stuff around.
like I said, I, I generally give myself maybe 30 minutes for these drawings. It's when it, when it started, I, I wanted to try to do a quick sketch, five minute sketch, that's it, and move on to the next thing. But over time, it's developed into a little more involved, <laughs> to say the least. It's interesting. I don't use a lot of white pens or markers. Oh, this chair. I've never noticed it before. But, uh, yeah, I, I tend not to use a lot of white pencils or markers. I, I, I never quite get, I never quite enjoy the effect or I'm probably using it wrong. I'm probably not doing it right. But I also had a professor in college who would get so mad if you used white, like a white material. And I didn't understand it then. And I'm, I'm never a big fan of being completely dogmatic with any kind of art practice. But I do understand where she was coming from. And I just wasn't in a place at the time to understand that I could, if I erased enough and tore through the paper, I could just put more paper on it. <laughs> and just start over, because why not start over? So this final piece I did, it was Saturday morning. It was very calm, it was a very calm Saturday morning. And I thought I would try something new. Not even, no, I'm not trying. Something new as far as these, these cups go. I'm, I'm no expert in watercolor. I've said that before and I'll say it again, but yeah, I, I, and I do need to practice. So, but here I am using a, uh, you saw that uh, wax stick I made with Addy a couple of videos ago. And I thought a, a nice watercolor uh, drawing, painting, watercolor painting, painting, um, a cup with a blue and green paisley pattern. And to complement the cup, I have my um, Jinhao porcelain pen, which my wife got me for our 20th wedding anniversary. When it comes to watercolor, I feel like I'm a little too anx anxious, a little too, oh no, a little too impatient. I, I started out using that uh, that brush just to, just to lay in color, and I immediately start trying to add the detail of the the paisley. And again, I'm trying to avoid going in with a white with white gouache or marker, not even marker on watercolor, but like any kind of paint or anything, trying to define the highlights and just not touch them, <laughs> uh, which is hard to do when you're inexperienced. But just trying to play with the layers and the color The nice thing with these drawings is also is um, they are not in the basement. 
They are not in my dungeon studio. They are upstairs with the rest of the world, which is nice. Usually no one's around in the morning when I'm doing this stuff, but on weekends, if I want to do a watercolor or um, other art, it's nice to not to uh, completely avoid the family by coming down to the basement and hiding myself away. And this way, when I'm upstairs, the kids see that I'm painting and they want to paint too, or draw, or just hang out and, and talk. It's nice talking to kids when you're trying to work. Sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, I think more watercolor. I, I Everyone needs a little bit more watercolor in their life. I really enjoyed how this turned out. Really enjoyed going in with the detail afterwards. All three of these pieces aren't hyper-realistic. And I'm trying to just approach with the... Uh, impression of it. You know, these these are sketches, so I don't have a lot of, you know, I, I don't want to take a lot of time. I, I want them to look good. I want them to look nice, but I don't want to spend a day drawing a cup. I have other projects and other things that I'm working on that might take a day. And I have a job for things to take a day. You know, that's, that's. You know, at that point, that's work. And who wants to not see their family when they're hanging around? But this is my morning routine. Coffee, drawing, sometimes talking to friends, just getting ready for the day. But how about you guys out there? What are your routines? What gets you ready for the day or the night if you work at night? Sometimes adding a little bit, you know, this one accomplishment is really great. It's like I, you know, if nothing else happens today, I I did do art on my own terms, in my own time, in my own way. So that's uh you know, it really helps the soul and the brain with this stuff. So for me personally, but yeah, in the comments down below, if you made it this far, let me know what your big routines are. I find this morning one really helpful. I need to figure out a way to incorporate some sort of nightly routine. Although I guess my nights are usually sleeping or staying up far too late uh, drawing or painting. which is better than some other uh, activities I could be involved in. And by that, I just mean video games and, and just sitting there watching TV, which honestly, everyone needs that too. Every once in a while, just to sit down and turn the brain off and uh, get caught up with WandaVision or The Expanse or whatever other show is out there that uh, you're into. Being an inexperienced watercolor painter, I'm 
often watching videos, tutorials, reading little articles, little blurbs. And I'm, I'm torn. I do like the hot white of, of the pen. I don't think I want to knock that down at all. It is very vibrant that way. But I do see a lot of, a lot of uh, people saying that, you know, any kind of wash over the entire page and then letting um, the darks of your paint like uh, dictate and inform the really the highlights. Um, I did not listen to that advice for this painting, but you know, I clearly I should in the future try that out. Uh, do you guys do that? I don't know. Is it is it worth trying to do like a make it a little more? I want I don't want to say muted, but adding a little bit of color to all of it, a little bit of wash, just to to, to take off the highlights, and then build up um, the dark tones, which will then inform where highlights are, and then they they just aren't as brilliant. Uh, I don't know something about something about the white highlights with the uh, the white border. Um, hey, I like it. That's kind of the good thing with uh, art, isn't it? Is that there aren't too many rules when it comes down to it. So yeah, do what you want. But I'm also a big fan of learning more. So if you guys have any tips, if you have any advice, or if you have any ideas for other routines to work into the day, um, that might help you or help me with my art and help you with yours, let me know. I am working on a new routine, just getting the kids drawing with me more. Addie has suddenly become very interested in like these mini comics. You know, when you take a page and you fold it up and then you have eight pages. Um, yeah, she's she's gone crazy with that stuff. So um, I tell her we should do a how-to video and she's thinking about it. So maybe someday in the future. There it is. So I just wanted to share uh, three, three cups, three different styles, a little insight on to why I'm doing them. Um, I know, you know, there there's a core group that always likes them or enjoys them, or so I'm really thankful that they're there, and I am encouraged by all of you. So. Please don't leave. <laughs> well, we can leave now because it's over. Again, um, thanks for stopping in. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe and share. Um, I will see you all very soon. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye.